I'm Gabriela or Gabby Diaz Ortiz on literally everything and I'm an illustrator. I don't usually do intros and outros to my videos mainly because I forget or because I usually only really upload these as a personal challenge and I forget that other people can see them at any time and so I forget to say hi. So hi! If you're new here, like I said before, I'm an illustrator. I like to share a lot of either sketchbook drawings or digital process videos, some of my weird little crafting sessions. I might get into posting maybe making costumes or cosplay things. A lot of my videos are really just me working on this space I can leave here at any time, I'm not in prison, and yet I act as if I am Rapunzel in her tower and I feel like every empty space in this wall needs to get covered up immediately. And so a lot of my videos are just me coming up with weird ways to spice up my walls. And, uh, I almost forgot, I like to post a lot of art vlogs of when I go to conventions. I do this because I haven't really done it that often. I've only done Comic Con twice, <laughs> but I have a goal for this year that I want to be able to do at least four different events by the end of the year and so far I've done three so I'm pretty excited about that. Every single May or October depending on if I can do both or if I'm too tired and I only do one, I try to do an art challenge. I do Mythological May and it's where I take tropes or creatures or categories from mythology in general and I work on a prompt list for that. Then from there on I decide if I want to make stickers or if I want to make zines or if I want to make illustrations for my portfolio. It's pretty much whatever it is that I think I need at the moment. But this month was, I'm not really going to get into it, but this month was not very kind to me. A lot of things happened, one thing in particular that really stopped me from doing what I do every year which is that I post every single day on my story and I share other people's art on my story every day. I kind of had to stop doing that. So this video is really kind of more of a pat on the back to myself that I even finished this in time because I was going through it and so this is kind of like a, a, a pick me up video really. Now, I love a good sketchbook. I like to get them thick as hell. Like, these get fat. These get so fat that not only have I had to put a string on the edges so that I could tie it together, I have ended up resorting to just making an elastic that I can take off because it's getting way too clunky. I decided that I wasn't going to do all of Mythological May in this sketchbook like I've done previous years, so some of them are obviously here in the sketchbook, others I did on my iPad, and then others I did on my laptop on Affinity because I don't have Photoshop and I'm not paying for it. That being said, I can't really do a flip through of them in this video, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share them up here. <laughs> I'm going to talk about them, whether I like them or not, if I think they're going to become prints or stickers in the future, uh, and if I think they miss the mark. Maybe they need some tweaking and hopefully by the end of the video you guys can tell me if you like any of them and you'd like to see them on my Etsy shop. The first one on the list is Sea Serpent. You can see the finished product here. I don't know how to feel about it. I think it was a bit of a shaky start because I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. I think when I was sketching it out, I had a vision of what it looked like. And even though this didn't stray all that far from it, it bored me. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I think maybe it's just that it's too blue. I don't know. I turned it into a transparent sticker and I took off. I, I did add things. I changed the colors a bit to see if it gave me anything, but it's not my favorite. The next one on the list is Lama Su. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I've only ever said it in art history classes. <laughs> Uh, and you know, hopefully everyone was saying it correctly, but I don't know. Uh, and once again, it's kind of a similar vibe where I did what I set out to do and I do think it looks really nice, especially like the zoomed in face. I love looking at the face, but overall, I don't know if it's giving me anything. So I don't know if I should tweak it a little bit more to then make it into a sticker or if I should just ignore it altogether. So. The third prompt was Cyclops, and I think this is where I start to get looser with my ideas uh, because, like I said, these were supposed to be sticker designs, and I just, I think I was getting too literal, and so when I did Cyclops, I tried to have a little more fun with it, maybe add some type. I do think it's cute. 
Um, he's accidentally wearing the bisexual flag, but you know what? That just makes him a bisexual cyclops. They're a little silly. They're a little silly. I don't know if anyone would actually want this sticker. I think it's cute. I think this is when I start to really work on art that I like, but I don't know if anyone would purchase one of these stickers. I will say though, I think it's funny. This one is, okay, so like <laughs> this one is Nobody Hurt Me while he's crying because, you know, Odyssey reference. I think nerds would, I think ancient Greek nerds would love where, where this is coming from, but would the average everyday person walking around at Comic-Con know or even care? That's, that's where my thought is going. Then the other one I think is a little more generic, but it says keep one eye open. Alpha Selena. The fourth one is Grim Dog, and I'm gonna be honest with you, when I was making my list, I was a bit stumped because some creatures were so similar to each other, even if they're from different cultures, that I ended up picking one and scrapping the other one uh, because I didn't want to have to essentially redraw the same concept. And so there was one spot that I was a bit at a loss for, and I ended up just including it because I saw it on the Wikipedia for a mythological creature and it didn't, you know, it didn't conflict with any of the other ones so I kept it. But I didn't really know what to do with it other than make it just a dog with anxiety. Just a dog with anxiety. Like that's, it's, it's really, it was really, it was me sketching out dogs and only hearing that one monologue from Prisoner of Azkaban, you know the one. Taking the form of a giant spectral dog is among the darkest omens in our world. It's an omen. Death. And so it's really just a dog with anxiety. So the first sticker, because I made multiple, some of these are like just dumps of me trying to come up with a sticker that matched the prompt. And so some of them, some of them say something bad is coming because, you know, it's supposed to give you an omen. And one of them says you should be scared. But my personal favorite says, oh no, something's gonna happen to you. But that's because ever since I watched Bridesmaids, the extended edition, I've been saying that anytime I have anxiety. And so I I, mean, I just need you to think of this dog with the voice of Kristen Wiig, but like in your, in your, like he's not really speaking to you. He's telepathically communicating to you. Something's gonna happen to you. I don't know what it is, but some, something's gonna happen to your body. The fifth prompt was Mandrake. And I'm not gonna lie, cuter than I originally expected it to. So when I decided to draw Mandrake, I knew that I wanted to exaggerate the fact that it looked like a baby because I feel like a lot of Mandrakes kind of look, they just look the same. They kind of look like a mixture between a tree and a root vegetable, but they're crying. And I wanted them to look like, you know when babies have a scrunched up face because they're crying? That's what I wanted. And I think, I think it came out cuter than I thought it was going to, but I think that's because I was spending too much time on it. When I painted this, I was in um, Fetty the Comics and it was one of those days where it starts off super slow. And so I kept tweaking it and I, I kind of fell in love with it. You know when you um, don't know where a drawing is going and it starts going like really well and you get kind of excited. I tried to add type and so this one just says, tears, water, are growth. I have no idea who said it, on Google, it's misattributed as being a Shakespeare quote, but I don't think he said it. So I don't know who originally said it, but it's on this crying woodland baby. The next prompt was Fawn and Fawn, I really only did on my iPad. I don't have any sketches of Fawn outside of the preliminary sketches that are not in the sketchbook and I don't want to look for the other one. So just see it on the screen. I think it is cute but I don't think it's my best. I don't know how to feel about it, really. I was really excited when I was originally working on it, when I was doing the face. That's great. I had so much fun, like, working on the face, but I think the composition is really boring. I, I really wanted it to look like one of those Rococo paintings where it's like a man and a woman and they're in a garden, but I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like, if I leave it alone and tweak it just a little bit, it could be perfect. But for now, it's just kind of eh. Day seven of Mythological May was Unicorn and I am obsessed with it. I'm definitely making stickers. I don't know when, but I'm definitely making stickers. I'm hoping 
that I can play around with the file maybe and make it like iridescent stickers maybe glittery but I know I, I'm, I'm making a sticker and I think what frustrates me about it is that I have been I've consistently been trying to draw the same kind of unicorn for my entire life uh, mainly because I really like the way that unicorns are described in the book The Last Unicorn where they're not necessarily horse creatures they just People who, who don't have the vision, you know, see them as a white mare, but they're supposed to be like this elegant, deer-like, goat-like, horse-like creature. It's a mix of multiple things in a very dainty, delicate, kind of ethereal way, and I think they're beautiful, but I really need to practice drawing animals. And so I fear that my own skill set is what was preventing me from drawing like the unicorn that I had in my brain. I tried to do a book cover for The Last Unicorn and I think it's good. I think it's a great cover. But you can't compare it to what I did with this. I have no idea how this happened. I think it's beautiful. I can't explain it. I, I think she's lovely. I did include the type on the file that I made after I scanned it uh, just because I thought it looked better without it but there is a little scroll directly above it in my sketchbook that says one of a kind I don't know if I should put that back in maybe change the look of the ribbon so it like goes around its horn but I love how this one came out I think she's adorable day eight was fairy and I am obsessed with this one also something was in the water back you know back to back uh, and I am so happy with how the wings came out. I think she's great. I mainly worked on this one because when I was thinking about fairies, I thought like, I don't want to make like a Winx Club looking fairy, even though I am a Winx Club girl. Not to, once again, not to date myself. I am a Winx Club girl. I didn't want her to look too much like a Winx Club girl. I didn't want her to look too much like Tinkerbell. I wanted something that could like blend in to nature maybe she looked a lot like a, a butterfly or a, a flower and i was looking through flowers on pinterest and i saw this like bright yellow one next to a picture of like a woman with 1920s makeup because pinterest just kind of feeds me anything because i have multiple boards that do not match with each other at all but in this case i think it really worked because i think she's so pretty i think it worked out i love her once again I'm definitely making stickers of this one. I'm considering making a print also, but I don't know if that's something that the general public wants. Because sometimes I have designs that sell out as stickers, but nobody wants as a print, or they sell out as prints, but nobody seems to care about as a sticker. And I think this one might just be a sticker girl. Day nine was Griffin. And I think Griffin is one of those where I'm okay with it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. So I don't think this one's really gonna become anything. I think the main issue that I have with it is that it looks a little too cartoonish. I don't know how to describe what my issue with it is. Obviously it's in the style that I always draw in and yet for some reason it looks really cartoonish. Like I couldn't push the realism of it as much as I want it to um, because I wanted to keep the colors subdued. I don't know what I was thinking really, but I don't, I don't know if I care for it all that much. It's okay. I don't hate it, but it's not going to become anything unless I can tweak something. I think another problem is maybe the proportion. I really wanted it to look like it had, you know, that eagle face, but a lion's mane and feathers. And I don't think I did it as well as I would like to. So if I can maybe one day remake it, I would just to see what it would look like. But for now, it's a, now it's a no. Day 10 was Rusalka and I, I do really like it. I don't think it's perfect. There are some things that I would like to change, but overall I love that she's giving the energy of that one lizard from Rango. You know the one. I think she's cute in a creepy kind of way. Uh, when I was doing my research for Mythological May, a lot of these are, honestly, most of these are creatures that I already knew about, or uh, if not all of them, I knew at least a little bit of because I'm one of those 
Wikipedia deep dive mythology theology girls. I see, I look up one thing and then I go to the other one and then I keep going. When I was doing my research on mermaids, I ended up going to see Selkies and then I went to go see Musalkas and then I ended up going to see Kelpies, you know, that kind of thing. And I, I wanted to differentiate each one of them from each other to, to at least be somewhat of a different design each time. And so I didn't want to make her look too fishy, um, but I did want her to look like she blends into the water. And so I really like how it came out. I think as an illustration, very cute. As a sticker, probably not. Day 11 was Harpy. And Harpy, I actually really think is cute. I don't know. I think this is the main problem. I give myself props. <laughs> to make a ton of stuff out of and then when it's done I'm like but would anyone buy it and I think I could be uh, pleasantly surprised because when I made my angel stickers I didn't think anyone would want them and they were like my top seller at every convention that I've done so far and I know exactly which one the favorites of all of those designs are now there could always be like a surprise so I don't want to say no because I do think this is really cute I would buy it if I was walking down uh, an artist alley and I saw it, I would buy it. But would other people buy it? That's kind of the problem. Um, but I think she's lovely. I like, I think what she has that Griffin doesn't have because I use the same initial color scheme is it just has more interest. I don't know if it's the, if it's the added in colors because I did add blues and I added reds that this one doesn't have. But I think this one's so much cooler. I also gave her blood on her claws because, you know. I will say I wish, I, I, I do think that if I were to change anything, I would make her nose more pronounced. I wanted it to be like a beak-like nose. But when I was inking, I messed up and I made it a little too skinny. And then I didn't want to like put white out over it or something. So I just left it like that. For all of my like, reference photos were women with like big beautiful schnozzes and i wanted it to be like like striking so i i would i would make it like more pronounced if i were to fix it day 12 is gorgon so like medusa and her sisters and i like it i do but i don't think anyone would buy a sticker that's kind of the problem here i think if i do a little bit of tweaking if i add maybe a secondary color and maybe make it a little more contrasted people would buy the sticker but until then i'm gonna put this in the maybe pile day 13 was al mirage and i hope i'm saying that properly that's what google told me to say so i'm taking its word but i've also heard google butcher spanish so i don't know if i should take it at face value but it is essentially this medieval arabic fey like rabbit it has a horn uh, I looked at a lot of tapestries online that had them and I liked them because a lot of them kind of looked like the art style that's in Watership Down, which I love. And so that's kind of the vibe I was going for. I wanted them to look weird. I wanted them to look slightly off-putting without being evil. You know what I mean? Like something's weird about them, but they're not, they're not trying to hurt you. They're just weird looking. Like they're, 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 you know, they're prey animals. So I wanted them to be like, to have those like wide eyes. I think this is one of those ones that looks really good in my sketchbook, but when you take the scan of it, it looked God awful. So I had to do a lot of tweaking the colors around, but I think it's cute. I think it's nice. I might make them into stickers just because I think even if people don't know what they are, they like the art style. So I'm thinking they're on my maybe pile. Day 14 was Changeling and I didn't do it on my sketchbook or on my iPad. I did it on Affinity on my laptop. And so I don't really have the sketches here, but when I was thinking about it, I like that Changelings are kind of like a fairy horror story. When I think of a Changeling, I think of those stories where fairies, you know, steal a human baby and they replace it with one of their own who looks exactly like the other one to trick the parents. It's a cool concept and I think there's a story there in the illustration. I just don't think anyone would particularly want to buy it as a print if they're not aware of what it means. I'm definitely gonna put it in my portfolio later as sort of like a, a spot illustration but I don't know if anyone would 
want to buy it as a print i do i do love it though i just don't think anyone would buy it as a sticker i did when i was making it though i was thinking of this book that i read recently it's the green children of wool pit so that's kind of the inspiration that i was going for that and for some reason i was in a, a mood to look at 1920s pictures of children's clothing uh, and so i just kind of did it like that day 15 is wear cat I love it, but not enough. As a sketch, delicious. Love it so much. I had so much fun sketching out all of the ideas. I think it has like a storyline and everything. Don't know if people want it as a print, but I also think some people would want it as a sticker. So I'm putting it in the maybe pile. I think you can tell that it's like a cat-like person, but I don't think anyone who doesn't know about my prompt list would look at it and go, ah, where cat, a woman who turns into a cat. You know what I mean? My only references were cat people from 1941. So like the movie, I watched it on HBO around Halloween last year. And I'm gonna be frank with you. I don't think, I don't think the cat woman did anything wrong because they were the worst. They were the worst. I feel like I could write an essay on how they were terrible people. Day 16 was Finks, and I'm making a sticker of this one. I think she's beautiful, and I'm really happy because I made it using only two highlighters and a pen. I think she's lovely. Day 17 was Yeti. He's probably my least favorite of the bunch. Not because he's ugly. Like, I love him. But I just think it looks really childish compared to my other stickers. And you could tell that I was just kind of, I just wanted to draw something to get over with. I don't want to think too much about it. And I just, I, this is what we end up with. He's right and he's valid because it says, I would really like it if people would stop invading my home. I said that with real rage as someone who lives in Puerto Rico, but that's neither here nor there. Day 18 was Phoenix. And I think it's a really cute sticker, I do. I think when you look up Phoenix on Google or Pinterest or something, you get a lot of very like hawk-like birds or eagle-like birds. They kind of all resemble flocks from Harry Potter or they look like they're from Merlin. They kind of all have like a very similar aesthetic to them and I kind of wanted to change that because I wasn't really married to it. And so I looked at a lot of birds that have really big beaks and are like, I guess, heftier looking, I don't know. And I wanted it to look like a match. So that's why the top half is like white on the inside because it's like burning white and smoke's coming out of it. I think it's a good idea. I don't know if anyone would see it and think Phoenix but I think it's a very cute sticker design. I might make it into a sticker depending on what other people say. Day 19 was Dragon, and that's kind of one of my other ones that I made purely on my laptop, so I also don't have uh, sketches of it right now. I think it's nice. It's not, I don't think it's outstanding, but I definitely think it fits in with some of my other sticker designs. So I might tweak it a little bit in the future and add it to my lineup. I used the same colors that I used when I made my Women With Swords sticker. So I might find a way to make it more interesting and I'm making a sticker of it because I do think it's cute. I think the shape language is really nice. It's simplistic, the shapes look nice. I might maybe, I don't know, add a scroll to it to have it say something about hoarding. I don't know, but it's definitely going to be a sticker. Day 20 was Wizard and I love him. I love him. I kind of took Wizard as an excuse to do somewhat of a character design. Oh no, Bob Ross fell down. I kind of used wizard as an excuse to draw a character design. I love the way everything came out. I like the whimsy goth style outfit that I gave him. I like the patterns that I ended up doing on his robe and the little teardrops that you can see on his pants. I Overall, I think he's really cute. I love him. I, he does not have a name. Does anyone have a name that I should give him? Because I definitely think he deserves a name. He's a person, he deserves a name, and I love him. Also, all of my reference photos were just pictures of Dev Patel. 
Because I want that boy back in a period piece. Put that boy in a situation. Day 21 with Cerberus, another one that I made on my laptop. I had a lot of fun making the dog face, you know, the teeth and everything. I think it's cute. I think it's a sticker though, maybe just the head. I, I know that if I just take one of my favorite heads, it's no longer Cerberus, it's just a dog. But I think the heads are stronger than the rest of his body. I also did add the snake for a tail this time because I never do because I think it's kind of silly looking. I think the reason I like the top half and not the bottom half is because since I added the snake tail, I think when you zoom in on the snake, it just looks silly. That's a silly looking snake. Why? Because whenever I have to draw snakes, I kind of just go loosey goosey and then you zoom in and it's just like a, a, an angry pool noodle. It's not scary. Day 22 was Arachne or Yorobumo. Um, I put them together just because I thought they were so similar that I didn't need to split them apart. It's not like when I was doing certain creatures and I was like, they are way too close to each other, um, yet different enough that it's just kind of like having the same character with slight differences. I wasn't specifically making Arachne from mythology, I just kind of wanted to make a spider woman. And she is not what I thought she was gonna look like. I still like her. I finally figured out how to do a technique on affinity that I didn't know how to do before. I finally figured it out, so it was a lot of fun to work on it, this one. But I feel like she's looking to monster high that I was envisioning. I feel like when I was imagining her, she had a very similar aesthetic to that one Vanessa Hudgens photo shoot. I wanted it to be like this campy villain girl character who just happened to look very iridescent y because I was basing it off of this picture of a spider web that had a bunch of rainbow colors on it because of the sunlight. That's the vibe. But I think what it ended up looking like is, you know, that's a monster high lesbian. That's a monster high lesbian. I love her. She's not a villain. She's not a villain. I feel like she was originally supposed to be mean and scary and then I worked on her and I was like, this is a cutie patootie. She's, she's not hurting anybody. She wouldn't hurt a fly. In fact, she's a vegetarian. Day 23 was Selkie and I love her. I love her so much. I love her so much. I love how cute and chubby she is. Selkie is one of those creatures that I thought if I'm making her I need to make her as different from my mermaid as possible because I knew I was gonna make a mermaid she's on the list I try to do that every year. The problem with that is is that I feel like a lot of the underwater creatures kind of blend together into what is you know the mermaid core of it all so like I ended up omitting Siren just because I thought most people when they think of a siren they just think of a mermaid and not the harpy like creature so it would have been too similar depending on how you see the prompt to both the things so I didn't end up doing siren. People tend to like merge them together so I thought if I was going to make one they all needed to be different from each other. I needed to stress what was different about each one so in this case I really wanted to focus on the seal part of her being a coat that you can remove. Day 24 was Angel and I drew this way ahead of time. Like this is an insane sheet. I drew this literally the same day that I drew the Mandrake. So I skipped a ton of pages because uh, I was bored and I kind of had an idea of where this one was going. I think it's cute. I don't know if I like it. I think because I drew so many biblically accurate angels. I have stickers that I think are just too similar, similar to them. And so I don't know if I'm ever going to turn it into a sticker. Maybe I could include it as part of that series, but I would have to tweak the colors to just be yellow and blue for them to connect. I don't know why I didn't do that originally. Day 25 was Succubus. I don't consider my like this theme to be a part of my art style. This was kind of a struggle for me because I didn't know what to push and what to omit. I think with Succubus characters, I looked into it a lot and a lot of them are either, they just look like human beings. You're killing people. No, I'm killing. 
or they look like human beings with bat wings or human beings with creepy hands or they don't look human at all they just got they, they're just kind of sexy i don't know i just don't think it matches the rest of my style but i am happy that i was able to do it because i think it's a you know it forced me to work on something different she's great it's just i don't think she can um go with the rest of my art style at conventions this is swan maiden and i think she's so cute i'm probably making this one into a sticker if not a print i don't think she'd sell well as a print i do think as a sticker she has a fighting chance but i think she's really cute i think she's really elegant Oh, Swan Maiden is kind of a similar vibe to the Selkie. So basically it is a person who kind of shapeshifts from swan to a human person. But you know that they're a Swan Maiden because they have sort of a swan skin or coat that they have to wear at all times. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bummed out when I was doing my research on Swan Maidens because they're, they kind of fall into the animal wife trope in mythology which is essentially it's that if a man steals her coat away from her she must become his wife the man takes the coat from her and it takes away her autonomy essentially and so i knew that if i was going to draw her i wanted her to be in all of her glory as a swan maiden with her little you know her little swan cape with her swan hat and her swan friends and family. Day 27 was gnomes. I took this as an opportunity, not necessarily to make a sticker, but to work on a more child's book drawing. So I drew a gnome and a squirrel bartering. I don't know the backstory other than the barter system that they have created. I think the squirrel's really cute. She's got a little hat on. She's nervous about what she's brought to the table and the gnome is assessing the goods before he can give, even think of a trade because he's a businessman. Day 28 is Kitsune and I take back what I said when I said that Griffin was probably my worst one. This is my worst one. I hate it. I hate it. It's not a poorly done drawing. I just hate it. It's so boring. It's so boring. And I think that's on me because I had an original idea and I was too lazy and I didn't do it. And so I ended up just, you know, taking what I have left and just adding a bunch of stars to the background. And I hate it. I hate it. Day 29 is Mermaid and she is the love of my life. She is the love of my life. I think this is the best mermaid I've ever drawn in my life. And I've drawn a ton of mermaids. I have. I live in the Caribbean people. I draw mermaids a lot. She is the best of the best. She is. I don't, I think I, I put crack in this. I don't know what it is about it. She's gorgeous. I looked at a lot of tropical fish in my mood board and I knew that I wanted to do that like design that some fish have that it's like a pattern it's not obviously they have scales but it's not a scale pattern it's like this weird little squiggly line that a lot of them have and the day that i posted this one we actually went to go see the little mermaid and i am obsessed with it i've been listening to wild uncharted waters on repeat for several days now i really want to draw halle bailey as uh, the Little Mermaid eventually. I kept putting it off, but I love her and I loved Prince Eric. I think it should be mandatory that if Disney is going to keep making live action reboots, the boys gotta sing. The boys have to sing. They have to put in the work. I want those boys singing in that audition room, okay? If you can't sing, you can't be the prince, okay? Because Evermore and Wild Uncharted Waters that's what true love is, okay? If you're going to be a Disney prince, I want you to sing for your life. Day 30 and day 31 are like my last ones. So day 30 is a dryad. I think she's really cute. I think she's really cute. I think it's one of those drawings where she looks really cute 
in my sketchbook, but then she scans terribly. And so you have to do a lot of tweaks digitally to sort of fix it. I once again think that this is a sticker only design. I don't think I should make a print of it. Or maybe I should make like an art book of what I have so far with my favorite ones, maybe like a little zine. I wanted her to be more tree than person because I didn't want her to look too much like poison ivy or something. I wanted her to look more like a weird tree creature. And then the last one is Booty, uh, mainly because I didn't want to write Cupid. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was, it, it was one of those ones where I was like, I don't know what else to draw here that doesn't look too much like my other drawings. And so I, I just, I drew two chubby babes. Cause I didn't want, I didn't want it to look too much like my angel drawing. And I didn't want it to just look like a baby. And I didn't want to make it Cupid. Now, honestly, I should have just drawn Cupid. I don't know why I didn't. I could have drawn Eros like an adult man with, you know, his bow and arrow and Eros and Psyche thing. I don't know why I didn't think about this until right now. It was one of those drawings where I hated it. And then I put it, I, I, I scanned it and worked on it digitally. And I think it looks way better now as a finished product than what it looks like in my sketchbook. I kind of hate it here. Here, I think it's cute, but in like a shirt that your grandma absolutely owned from the 80s that she got in church or something. Way. Very specific, but I feel it in my heart. So yeah, that has been my mythological name. I am happy that I even finished it at all. And so even if some of them are not my favorite drawing in the world, I'm happy that I was able to get something done. I feel like it's an accomplishment either way. I drew something even when I didn't really have the motivation to do it. And some of them were surprising bangers. I'm definitely gonna be making stickers of them eventually or a print of them eventually. I know that the mermaid one, I'm definitely gonna have them as prints or stickers by the next time that I do a convention. If I get into Comic-Con again next year because they've changed the artist submission um, application. If I get in, because now it's gonna be juried, I'm definitely gonna be making it into a print, hopefully. I think it's beautiful. I'm very happy with it. Some of them are my favorite things ever. Some of them still need tweaking. They're in the maybe pile. And then other ones I know that I'm not gonna do anything with them, but I'm happy that I made them. Since I've been talking about stickers and prints and zines this whole time, I feel like I can't leave without bringing up the fact that I am going to be updating my Etsy store. I have been on vacation mode since around Comic Con because I didn't want to have a listing up if I was going to sell out of it and I didn't have time to, you know, reorder it or something. So anything that hasn't been sold out from the three events that I've done is going to be up on my Etsy store. You guys can find me as Gabby the Desert Beast Art Shop on Etsy. It's currently on vacation mode still because I'm still updating my my listings. I need to take a bunch of new product photos. And so that's why it's taking me a bit longer to do. But if you guys follow me here or maybe favorite my shop on Etsy, you guys can get notified when I do eventually reopen my store. If you liked any of the prints, stickers, or zines, that I had at any of my tables, but you didn't buy them at the time, now's your chance. And if you live in Puerto Rico, you don't even need to get the Etsy. You can just send me a DM or a message and I'll happily meet you somewhere so that we can exchange. Just let me know. I'm hoping that I can have the Etsy store up again. If not, when I do upload this video, maybe a few days after that. So please check it out. And I hope you guys like this video. If you would like to see some of my other videos, that would be nice. If you would like to check out any of my other art, I have my social media handles here. That would also be nice, especially on Instagram because I don't know what's going on there, but my follower count has been rapidly declining. I don't, I don't know how this happened. I went from 14.9k to 14 very quickly. Uh, I don't know if it's bots or something or if I'm just not posting as much as I should be, but you guys can follow me there. I'm on TikTok. I'm on TikTok a lot, so you guys can follow me there too. And yeah, so just overall, if you want to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel, that would also be nice. And just overall, I hope, you ha I hope, I hope this video was good. I hope it was entertaining. I know that it was mostly just me talking, but 
it's been a rough, just a rough month for me. And so I'm just happy that I was able to share the art that I was able to finish in time by the end of the month. So yeah, happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month now. <laughs> Bye.